Hello, my friends, and good morning. You probably noticed that for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be doing some different lessons. We will not be working from Eureka Math for about the next two weeks. We are going to be working from Go Math, and you should have received lesson seven, day one, and there is not a video to go with this, so you're gonna need to get all of your instructions from me. A couple of things that you need to know is that you are going to need to gather uh, these coins. You're going to need to have 10, 10 pennies. You're gonna need to have 10 pennies, as it says right there. You're going to need to have 20 nickels. We're using plastic ones at school, and that's what I have here. You're going to need 10 nickels. You're going, excuse me, 20 nickels. You're going to need to have 10 dimes. You're going to need to have, <clears throat> you're going to need to have eight quarters, not for this lesson, but for the lesson tomorrow. You'll need to have eight quarters. And you will also need to have, I'm pulling out my dollar bills. You'll also need to have two $1 bills. So, you might want to take a minute, pause the video, and record the fact that you need 10 pennies, 8 quarters, 20 nickels, 10 dimes, and two $1 bills. You will need those through the course of about the first uh, week, and uh, I'll keep you informed about when you're going to need those. So gather those materials up, and what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to take these back off, what we're going to be doing today, we won't be working with the quarter today, but we will be working with the quarter tomorrow, and in a few days we'll be working with the dollar bill. But for right now, I would like you to draw, if you would, a picture of each one of these coins. So it says to sort the coins and then draw the coins. Well, uh, you're not going to be sorting any coins today, but you are going to draw a picture of a penny, draw a picture of a nickel, and drawing a picture of a dime. You're going to need to tell what the value of a penny is, what the value of a nickel is, and what the value of a dime is. And I'd also like you to think of them in terms of the size. Like for example, the nickel is bigger than a dime. It's also bigger than a penny. A penny is bigger than a dime. And a nickel is bigger than a penny. A dime is smaller than both the nickel and the penny. I'd also like you to think about the color, copper color for the penny and silver for the nickel and the dime. So you're going to write down as much information as you can or that you know about a penny, a nickel, and a dime. That is going to be your first assignment. And then um, <clears throat> we are going to, I'm going to talk you through the assignment and um, then you're going to do the assignment on your own and then you will come back and uh, we will correct it together. So let's go ahead and turn over to the second page. This is the teaching part and you're going to notice that there will be a lot of information that helps you to best understand the value of these coins. And of course you can use these values to help you on the page that I just turned. So again, you have a dime. A dime has a value of 10 cents written out as words or 10 cents written out with the cent sign. Oh, and I just thought of something really important that I forgot to tell you, which I will get back to here in just a minute. <clears throat> I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So then we have a nickel. Here's the picture of the nickel. and not, The pictures are not always the same on each one of these coins, so you really do have to pay attention to the relative size and color. The value of that nickel is five cents with the word cents spelled out or five cents with the cent sign. And the value or this particular coin is called a penny and its value is one cent. And uh, if you put it with a cent sign, it looks like this. Now the little cent sign they have right here for you at the bottom of the page. The cent sign is what we use when we're measuring something that is less than a dollar, which we'll be getting to in just a bit. Now, I almost failed to mention that there are a stack of uh, vocabulary cards that you also need to cut out. Half of the vocabulary cards will be for 
money, and the other half of the vocabulary cards will be for time. We're not going to be looking at time for just a bit, so you can just keep that one uh, safe until we need it after we finish with money. But the, the vocabulary cards that you're going to name, need are a penny, and if you flip it over on the back, you're going to see what the penny looks like. You're going to see that a penny has a value of one cent. You'll need to have the dollar sign card. If you flip it over on the back, it shows you what the dollar sign looks like. We'll be using that dollar sign as we work through uh, in a couple of days. Notice that it also has a decimal point, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Then we have a dime. It shows you what the dime looks like. A dime has a value of 10 cents. And then the cent sign that we just talked about just a minute ago, the cent sign is right here, and it comes after the total number of cents you're talking about. It never goes in front, it always goes behind. I'm going to go back to the dollar sign for just a second, because I want to compare these two. When we're looking at the dollar sign, it always comes at the beginning of the number. When we're looking at the cent sign, it always comes at the end of the number. But you will be able to also use these cards to help you with going through your assignments as we zing along. Your nickel is looks like this, and your nickel has a value of five cents. Quarter looks like this, and it has a value of 25 cents. You probably also notice that they're also written in Spanish, but you don't need to worry about that Spanish unless, of course, you speak Spanish, then you could do both. A decimal point is used when we're talking about things that are a dollar or more. The decimal point, which we'll talk more about, divides the whole dollars from the cents, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. And, of course, the one dollar which you need to have at least two of those to use as we're working through this. One dollar is worth, and I need you to know this, it is worth a hundred cents. It takes a hundred pennies to make a dollar. These cards, you are should have them cut out and ready to go. And if you have a question about something, say like back here on this first page, where you were supposed to be drawing a picture of a penny in the first box, you can always go to the penny card and flip it over and there's a lot of information that will help you know about the penny plus it also shows you the color. Alright, so those vocabulary cards will be very important to you and you're welcome to use them as often as you need to. Alright, so once you get this in your head about the value of a dime, which is 10 cents, the value of a nickel, which is 5 cents, and the value of a penny, which is 1 cent then you have to count the dimes by tens, and they're showing you how that's going to work. So one dime, let me get my pencil, one dime has a value of 10 cents, and I need you to make sure that you write that above the coin. You are going to be writing that above the coin, and this one has a value of 10 cents, and another dime, whether you're looking at the front or the back of the coin, it still has a value of 10 cents. Please get in the habit of writing the value above the coin, and uh, that will help you to be able to count. Notice that when you're counting dimes, you're counting by tens, because each dime has a value of 10. So one dime is 10 cents, two dimes is 20 cents, three dimes is 30 cents, 10, 20, 30. When you're counting by nickels, each one of those nickels has a value of five, and you are going to count by fives. This is all a part of the learning. So when I count by fives, I'm going to say one nickel is five cents, two nickels is 10 cents, and three nickels is 15 cents. Counting by fives, five, 10, 15. Now, if we have a mix of dimes and nickels and pennies, we're going to have to start counting first by tens because we have two dimes, and then we're going to have to count by fives because we have two nickels, and then we're going to count by ones. Please do not forget to put the value of the coin at the top of each coin. So let's start by counting always with your largest value first. So when, I, when I'm lining my coins up to count, I always want to go to the coin that has the largest value first. That's why my dime is coming first. My nickels are second, followed by my pennies with the least amount of value. So 10, 
20, I'm gonna go up by five, 25, up by five, 30, up by one, because this is worth one, so that would be from 30 to 31 to 32. Again, 10, 10 more is 20, five more is 25, five more from that is 30, one more than that is 31, one more than that is 32, and a value of, you should be tracing that over, 32 cents. Your job, my friends, is going to be now to find the value of these nickels and penny and these dimes, nickels, and nickels. Please remember to put the value above each of those coins. And if you're not sure which coin it is, you can always go back to your cards and take a look. I have nickel, 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 penny, dime, dime, nickel, nickel, nickel. Your job is going to be to count what is the value of one, two, three, four, five, six coins here and five coins here. Write the total value and do not forget the cent sign. Okay, we're going to come over and you're going to do exactly the same thing. Remember to write the cent, cent sign after the number. I think I've already mentioned that to you, but you might want to really get that cemented in your head. You're going to write the cent sign after the number. Count on to find the total value. Make sure you identify the value of each of those coins. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and then you're going to show your counting down below. Make sure you use a comma to separate those values so it's easier for you to be able to count. All right, so your job is to finish three through six, writing the total value here, and then you have a word problem. Maggie had five nickels, she gave, two nickels to her sister, what is the total value of the nickels that Maggie has now? So your job is to, oops, sorry, your job is to, this is gonna be a tiny bit different than what you're used to, but I would draw a picture of those five nickels and then I would show that she gave two of them away and then I would figure out what she has left. So we'll come back to that problem after you've had a chance to work the page on your own. Then you're coming over to the next page, and again, you have two word problems that you're going to do. Analyze, Jackson has, remember to use cubes, has four pennies and three dimes. She, or he buys an eraser that costs 20 cents. How much money does he have, does Jackson have now? Here's your space for drawing your picture and figuring out how much money he has. This is a two-step problem, my friends. This one has two steps. Second graders have been doing two-step problems for quite a while, just not with money. Then we're going to draw two ways, draw two ways to show 25 cents, and you can use dimes, nickels, and pennies. You can use dimes, nickels, and pennies, and I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of different ways you could draw that. And then, down on number 10, Sue has 40 cents. Circle the coins that show this amount. So you're gonna have to figure out which coins you would need to circle in order to have 40 cents. And that could be a lot of different ways that you could do that as well. So you need to take care of that. Then, uh, as you come over to the next page, this practice and homework, this page you need to do last. This is actually going to be your exit ticket. So you're going to do this page last. It is the exit ticket. This is the one that you'll be sending to your teacher. So you don't wanna do this page just yet. You want to skip that one, come over and do the last page. It says do this page before the exit ticket. What is the total value? I'm gonna put a big box around that. What is the total value of this group of coins? You've got a dime two nickels and a penny. Show your counting. Make sure you also show your value up at the top. Okay, now let's come down to Hayden is building toy cars. Each car needs four wheels. How many wheels does Hayden use to build three toy cars? Okay, you're gonna figure out a way how you would solve that particular problem. And I'll tell you right now, if you add four and three together and get seven, it will be incorrect. You need to think about what you're being asked to do. And I would suggest that maybe you even draw 
a picture. This is a little bit different than some of the word problems we've been doing up to this point, but on this problem I would probably draw a picture of those cars and the wheels that each car has. Okay, what is the value of the underlying digit? This is something we have done a lot. I just need to know what the value of that four is. Question number four, Lillian is counting by fives. She is counting by fives. What are the next numbers she will say? This is important for you as you are going to be counting nickels. You need to be able to count by fives. Sophie has 12 grapes in her lunch bag. She shared seven grapes with her sister. How many grapes does she have? So a very simple, straightforward, basic fact problem, which I don't think you'll have too much problem solving. So now I am going to tell you that you need to work the pages that I have assigned. Everything up and to do not do the exit ticket until after you've checked all those pages with me. So you didn't have to watch a video today. And now your job is to pause the video and go through and go over each of these or work each one of these problems. When you're all the way finished, you are going to turn the video back on and I will go over the problems with you and we will make sure that you did them correctly. And if you didn't, help you get them fixed so you see where you made your boo-boo. And then you can do the exit ticket and send it to your teacher. It will be a little bit different than what you've done up to this point, but we'll get through it during the next two weeks as we do t uh, money first, and then we'll spend some time talking about how to tell time on an analog and a digital clock. All right, so. Go ahead and pause the video, and I will see you in just a few minutes. Okay, pause the video. Okay, are you back? Okay, well, let's take a look at what you needed to do. On this first page, you should have drawn a picture of a penny and put a one cent in the middle to show its value. It is called a penny, it's copper in color, and it's just a bit bigger than a dime, and its value is one cent if I read it, wrote it with a number and a word. So that was basically what I was looking for you to do when you had to describe that particular coin. You needed to draw a nickel, it is silver in color, it is bigger than a penny. Oh, it's also bigger than a nickel. Bigger than a penny and and also bigger than not a, a penny. Bigger than a penny and bigger than a dime. Okay, it's the biggest one actually. Um, it's called a nickel and its value is five five cents if you write it out in words. And then the last one you should have done is you should have drawn a dime. It is silver in color. It is the smallest of these two coins, and if you wrote it out with words and numbers, it would have a value of 10 cents. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next page. All right, let's come on down here to this problem. I hope that you um, remembered that you always start with the largest value first, and let's take a look at problem number one. You should have put five above the nickel, five above this nickel, five above this nickel, five, five, and one. You need to show the value. You always show the value. Whenever you're drawing a coin or counting coins, you always have to show the value. I hope that you did. Let's go ahead and start counting. Five, counting up by five puts me at 10. Going up five more puts me at 15. Five more, 20. 5 more 25, 1 more 26. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, up one more gives me 26. Making sure that your cent sign is always coming at the end of your number. Did you also notice that I used commas to separate uh, the numbers so that I didn't get them all twisted around and make it look like it has a value of, or that that's maybe be, 510 cents, we don't want that. Okay, coming down to problem number two. Again, you should show the value of each of those coins. 10 cents, 10 cents, five cents, five cents, five cents, and then you show the counting. 
10 cents, going up by 10 is 20. This time you're going up by 5 to 25, up by another 5 to 30, up by another 5 to 35 for a total value of 35 cents. All right, let's go ahead and flip over to the next page. Here we go. I'm just going to put this off to the side for right now. So let's go ahead. Remember to write the cent sign after. You've got dimes, all dimes this time. So each of the values up at the top is going to be 10. And this one will be easy because you're skip counting by tens. 10 cents up by 10 is 20, up by 10 is 30, up by 10 is 40, up by 10 is 50, up by 10 is 60, and you should have had 60 cents. Okay, moving right along to our next one. So nickel, 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 nickel. It's all nickels this time. Five, value, value of five, value of five, value of five, value of five, and value of five. Five cents going up five more is 10. Going up five more is 15. Going up five more is 20. Going up five more is 25. And up five more is 30 for a value of 30. Now we're moving down to number five. This time we have one, two, three nickels, or excuse me, three dimes and three nickels. A value of 10, 10, 10 for the dimes and five, five, five for the nickels. Let's see the counting part. That's going to be 10, up another 10 is 20, up another 10 is 30, up another 10 is, oops, sorry, that's going up five. So going up five goes from 30 to 35, up five more puts you at 40, up another five puts you at 45. All right, so let's take a look at Maggie's problem. Oop, wait a second, got to do this one. So we have a nickel, a nickel, a nickel, penny, penny, penny. So my value is five, 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 one, one, one. Starting with the nickel, five going up by five is 10, going up another five is 15, up a penny is 16, up a penny is 17, up a penny is 18 for a total value of 18. So now we have Maggie who had five nickels and gave two to her sister. We want to know the total value of those nickels. So I drew one, two, three, four, five nickels. Because I'm drawing them, notice that I put the value inside so that I know that I am talking about the nickel. She gave two of those nickels, which I crossed out, to her sister, leaving three nickels. I'm starting by counting by fives. Five going up by five is 10. Going up by five more is 15. If you got that problem right, congratulations to you. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the next page as we continue on with the, with the correction. So let's take a look at this problem. We have Jackson who had four pennies, one, two, three, four pennies, and three dimes, one, two, three dimes. Notice that I have put them in value order because the dimes have more value than the pennies. The dimes are coming first, even though the word problem says that the pennies are coming first. You always put them in value order. And I'm gonna say that again, I'm gonna say that a lot. You always need to line everything up in value order because they will not always do it for you. Okay, so he has four pennies and he has three dimes. He buys an eraser that costs 20 cents. So I figured out, first of all, what the total value of all of those coins were. So I started at a dime, went up 10, got 20, 10 more gave me 30, up a penny, 31, up a penny, 32, up a penny, 33, up a penny, 34. I know that my total value was 34, and because the eraser cost 20 cents, I subtract a 20, which was easy. Four ones take away zero ones was four ones, and three tens take away two tens was one ten, giving me a total value of 14 cents. All right, so now there are lots and lots of different ways to show ways that you could uh, represent 25, and I, have, I think I've shown you four different ways. You only had to show two. The one that takes the most time is to draw all the pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You could draw all 25 pennies and get that one right. Or you could have a combination of two dimes and a nickel. 10 up, 10 more is 20, up five gives me 25. Or you could have five nickels, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Or you could have two dimes, 10 plus another 10 more gives you 20, 26, 27, 28, 29, oops, sorry, 
20, 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Lost my count there. All right, and there are other ways that you could do that as well. So you needed to circle the amount to show, whoops, sorry, right here. You needed to, Sue has 40 cents. You're going to circle the coins to show that amount. So this is one possible way you could have done it. As long as you have circled four coins, that would be absolutely okay with me. You could also circle it a little bit different if you wanted to. I'm going to just come over here. You could have circled them like this. One, two, three, and four. That's one way you could have done it. Or you could have circled them like this. As long as you have four dimes, then you would be fine. There's several ways that you could do that. All right, so then the next page is your exit ticket. Remember that you are not going to do that exit ticket until I am finished going over all of these problems, my friends. There are five problems on the exit ticket. And now we are going to go to the very last page that you needed to do, not the exit ticket. Here we go, this is the last page. And what is the value of this group of coins? Of course, you need to put the value of a dime up at the top for 10. Here's a nickel up at the top for five, another nickel for a five and a penny. And then I need to count 10 cents going up five cents puts me at 15. 15 going up five more puts me at 20. And 20 going up one more puts me at 21. If you got 21 cents, congratulations. Now this little problem right uh, here, mm, I will be interested to see. We've not spent a lot of time on this particular concept, but I don't think it's an impossibility for you to figure it out. So it says that Hayden is building toy cars. Each car has four wheels. How many wheels will Hayden use um, to build three cars? So there's a couple of ways you could do this. Well, you could say that each car has four wheels, or that would be four wheels on one car, four wheels on another car, and four wheels on another car. You could say four plus four is eight, plus four more gives you 12. That's one way you could do it. You could refer to that as three groups of four, which would be 12. Or you could draw a picture of those three cars. Here's car one, here's car two, here's car three. There's four cars here, plus, I mean four wheels here, plus another four gives you eight, plus another four gives you 12. Or if you're really smart, you could say three times four or three groups of four is 12, which is where you're going to be going if we have time this year. And of course you need to write a number sentence. Hayden has 12 wheel, or needs 12 wheels. Okay, moving on to our next problem. What is the value of the four in this number? I hope you said that it has a value of 400 written out in standard form, or you could say that it has 400s written out in unit form. That would be a great way to identify. If you said both of those, fantastic. As long as you said either four or 400s, I would be happy. Okay, and Lillian, who is counting by fives, she started at 40, it's just like counting by nickels. 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and at any time if you need to pause the video, you're welcome to do that. And of course, 12 take away seven is going to give you five grapes. Sophie has five grapes left. That one was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and you shouldn't have any trouble with those if you are practicing your 36s. All right, so now that you have gone over all of that with me, your next job is to do the five problems that are on uh, page 471. 471 is your exit ticket, and now that you've done all of the corrections, and if you need to go back and fix any of those you need to, make sure you show all of your counting, make sure you or show all of your values, make sure that you show all of your counting. Use commas to separate your counting, please. Using commas to separate your counting on all of these problems. And then you have two word problems that you need to do down at the bottom. And with that, uh, I will tell you good luck on this. Um, when you're finished with it, you need to send a copy of it to your teacher. And I will say to you, have a great day of learning. <laughs>